Good evening, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us and taking some of your time. I know it's been a very busy day for you all, but it's a great occasion for you to learn some experience from some insiders, some players, some key players of our industry. So it's great. I want to welcome everybody uh, for this uh, talk. We called it Emphasize M and Collaboration. We want to speak about uh, what's behind a material that some have already started using, but also how that can generate new business opportunity, new ways to collaborate and to learn from each other. So it's great now to welcome on stage uh, our friends here. Yeah, we have um, on my left, um, Rashid Iqbal from Navina Denim Limited, Executive Director. Uh, then we have Christina. <laughs> Christina Ajizu, Design Manager Denim, Tom Taylor. Uh, Juliane Novakovsky, Head of Sustainability and Corporate Responsibility, also Tom Taylor. And then we have um, uh, Denise Drouin, uh, The Flex Company, and Marmara Hemp, President and CEO. And uh, Lansing, from Lansing, Michael Kinimov, Business Development Project Management. Okay, okay. Um, so um, just the introduction is to start speaking about the collaboration. There has been a collaboration. At the center of this, there is an exhibitor of the show, of the NMPV, um, uh, Rashid uh, from um, um, MDL. Uh, has collaborated with Tom Taylor, but together with him and together with Tom Taylor, there, are, there have been many players. We selected some of them which have played an important um, role because we know that collaborating is not just one plus one plus one, but it's plus one because there are five, but it's much more than five because this brings a lot of uh, initiatives, a, long, a lot of trial and errors, but also a lot of richness and great experience for everybody because we are also here to share with you the experience they had. And also at the end of this speech, we want to, that everybody can speak to each other, learn from each other from this experience that, that can also bring uh, a richness and a better experience uh, in their business also for the future, for what the future of the market can be and how our business development can bring to everybody. So uh, I would like to start from uh, Rashid. Um, Rashid, um, how was this collaboration started? Um, starting from hemp, starting from what you did in the past and what you're doing now together with Tom Taylor. Hi Maria, first of all, thank you so much. And uh, I really appreciate you taking out time to call all the collaborators and talk about our experiences. Um, first of all, about the collection. This is a very special collection last year in January when Christina approached us and she wanted to have a line with ham and of course something with a soft hand touch. And uh, to that I said, okay, instead of going back and forth and doing number of trials, why don't I use my last year's experience of a collaboration with Lansing Company? And uh, last year we did a very interesting project. In that case, Lansing was the designer themselves and they were the fiber uh, suppliers as well. And it was Genealogy and Andrei Mosin who was designing the fabrics. The end result was very interesting and very much in our control. We knew exactly where we are going to land. I thought that it would be a good idea that we bring all the supply chain members together and have open discussions. Because the first time when I talked to Christina, she had a long list of, you know, she wants this, this, and hand feel and physicals and right sustainability everything it has to be you know to today's time a fabric has to be sustainable that's the minimum requirement whatever best practices the mill can put that's fine but more than that she was quite demanding so i thought it would be a good idea to reach out to the partners and discuss the target what we have in hand what kind of challenges we have and how we can achieve them see in these days just to have a look at one shade or a, one particular slug character and then you say no i don't like it you know that's a lot of efforts and money so we tried to uh, 
do as less as we can and try to please her as much as we could by going back and forth. So there was a lot of efforts in this collaboration. And we are very, very happy to see that at the end, Christina selected two constructions with two shades, basically four fabrics. And what we ended up doing is making a whole collection, the fabric so versatile, right from a jacket all the way to the kids' fabric. So that's the beauty of this collaboration that we have had, and we finally ended up with one of the most interesting collection that we have designed. Okay, thank you. Thank you for this uh, telling of the story of the since the beginning. Now I would like to know from Tom Taylor, from Christine, and from Juliane, um, if it was the first time that you started a project which was tr entirely sustainable, and also how this originated, and what is this collection like? Uh, where can we see it? Uh, please, tell us more. Yeah, I can explain a little bit more. Um, first of all, Tom Taylor is already doing a lot of sustainable products. We were already much entered into organic cotton and better cotton for a long time. We just saw that um, there are a lot of issues at the moment with uh, cotton fibers, and we all know that, we are all aware of this. We just wanted to find alternatives next to cotton and see what else we can do. So we wanted to create more super fabrics, I would say, that contain a blend of fibers that are sustainable, that are ecological, and they have less uh, footprint, less impact. So we came to this idea of uh, finding a partner where we could trust and that we could have a very good connection, a partner that we know already because we already sourced together, we did a lot of collections in the past, and it always worked. So we thought, okay, let's, let's try and make this happen. That's why we started more than a year ago. It was a very slow development with a lot of back and forths. Yes, demanding. <laughs> but um, the target was to reach to a result that we will be happy as an organization, that we offer a product that we are proud of and that our customers, our end consumers would understand it and that they would wear it. So also price range wise. So this was the, like the difficult part because we know that also hemp is not the, the cheapest fiber, we all know, uh, but it's worth it because in the end of the day, you create something which is good. And we also try and we target to reach to the customers to explain them what is it and why we use it. But uh, when will it appear in the market and how much will it cost at this point? You spoke about the price, we okay. want to know about it. Okay, we will deliver the goods in August okay. already this year and everything is in production um, and yeah, the price is very average, so we are around 59.99, so it's very commercial, everything is easy going and the two fabrics that we have created, the two different families that we have, one is much more commercial, a blend with BCI cotton and hemp and lycra, which is more, let's say, mainstream and it will reach to more mainstream consumers. And then we have a blend with tencel inside, mm -hmm. which is a little bit heavier and much more authentic look. And there we target to reach a little bit more fashionable customers because we also offer more fashionable fits. But all the prices are quite average and easy to reach from any people out there. Anybody, any consumer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and adding to this, I mean, I'm wearing the jacket already and the pant as well. So you can already see uh, one of the color ranges. But the most important thing is, to highlight here, I mean, Christina was pushing internally, I mean, from a Tom Taylor perspective, this topic super well. I mean, we, we have a sustainability geofix and she always um, yeah, was like updating everyone in the team and explaining how good the whole collaboration between the different parties has been. And for me, this is really a great example how good the collaboration between different parties can be. And our goal is to make from an innovation, bring innovations to a new standard. Because I mean, a few years ago, organic cotton has been innovation, but now it's like the new standard. And for us, the hemp topic should be the same thing. We should integrate hemp in more and more different fabrics and more and more different product groups as well, if this is possible. So this should be maybe another goal to include hemp in other fabrics as well. Okay, thank you. So as we speak now from another fiber perspective, and so let's introduce uh, Denny, uh, yes. tell us 
tell us something more about this experience. How was it for you? And also, uh, of course, there are different kinds of AMP. If you want to say something briefly about this, I know it's, uh, it could be uh, raise the discussion, but we also want to know more about this. Yes, there are, you know, everybody speaks about hemp. There are many different kinds of hemp, and uh, there are some, basically hemp is a natural fiber, in any case. But there are some hemp which are more sustainable than the other one, and uh, that's why we uh, started the collaboration with Rachid. We wanted to understand, you know, as, as most of the brands also didn't know much about hemp. And uh, so we explained, you know, the, our hemp, you know, the Marmara hemp, basically um, is, you know, is difficult to spin, because it's a hemp fiber which is not bleached, which is not chemically treated, which is only mechanically treated. So since the fiber is only mechanically treated, the fineness level is lesser, but uh, we have an extremely um, uh, sustainable fiber. And uh, also Rashid was looking for uh, fibers who got certification. You know, that's what the brands are looking for. You know, so we um, we did the um, uh, you know the sustainability certificate. Um, we also did the cradle to cradle certification, and we got the platinum level. Actually, we were running for the uh, for the gold level, and we got the platinum just before Christmas. So that was really good. Congratulations! Thank you. And uh, and uh, and also we uh, completed end of last year the LCA. Uh, and which is actually, so we are the only hemp fiber having the full LCA done. And, uh, and when, we, when we saw the results, actually we, our fiber is carbon negative. So that was the very, very, you know, uh, great news right. because, you know, when we ran it, we didn't know exactly, you know, everybody spoke about the, uh, you know, the sustainability of hemp, but whenever you make it, you know, you make the LCA and we, you know, we found out that basically, to produce one ton of cottonized hemp fiber, we produce 1.2 ton of carbon. But in the meantime, the fiber is absorbing, our fiber is absorbing 1.7 ton. So we are 0.5 ton carbon negative. So that's the good thing of using, you know, the, 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 the good hemp. Uh, I mean, this hemp, which is only mechanically treated. Okay, thank you. Um, Michael, um, we would like to know something from Lensing. Um, if uh, uh, Lensing has already worked together with uh, hemp in the past and uh, tell us about this experience from your point of view. Um, yes, in the past we've worked with different bus fibers. I think many years ago I did many projects on linen for instance and I think there's a real um, good uh, empathy between linen and tensile and I wanted to replicate that on hemp um, we tried to work with uh, bamboo some years ago and I don't mean bamboo viscose I mean actually bamboo fiber but this was a super coarse fiber and not really suitable for uh, textiles so I was wondering where we were with um, with hemp I'd heard about cotton heist hemp 2019 uh, I met with my friends at NDL, they'd started to make some fabrics and I said, well, why don't we do something together? Um, and COVID got in the way, but last year we launched something, a project that we called Bast Recast. And um, NDL supplied about seven base fabrics, Indigo and Ecru, many blends with Tencel, some with Modal. And we made a collaboration then, probably one of the best projects I've worked on. Uh, Mosin from Endrime was involved as well. And so that was a very positive experience. Uh, that was with a supplier out of China. Subsequently, we've worked with hemp to use hemp as a pulp to spin Tencel. So we've made a, sp a small production where this is a blend of wood pulp and hemp pulp and um, that is also going to go into a, a denim project so i think our interest in pulp is is quite strong at the moment mm, I, I want to say something which i forgot to say because i forgot to introduce myself not because i want to speak about myself but because i represent textilwirtschaft my name is maria cristina pavarini and i work as a journalist for this uh, amazing magazine you all know because it's uh, number one in germany so Let's go ahead. <laughs> Let's go ahead.
let's go ahead with this conversation. And uh, you, okay, we speak about the past experiences and we speak about also the new uh, collaboration that has joined together everybody, but I also would like to know now, um, making the treasure out of this experience, what do you see as a future uh, evolution of this for you to capitalize and how to continue? So I would like to know this new set of questions to everybody of you. So uh, Rashid, Yeah, please. Maria, uh, like I said, you know, after so much of collaborations and discussions and back and forth mails, what we were able to do is finally come up with just four fabrics. So we're talking about reducing our wastages. You know, we're talking about controlling the end result. We were pretty much in control of what uh, Christina was looking for. So the idea really was not just a mere discussion, but to understand what would be the right blend. It's not about having a higher percentage of tensile or higher percentage of hemp. It's the question about having the right percentage. What is the right blend? So we were able to figure that out with all these discussions. So going forward also, I would have open discussions. See, we have already been working with uh, brands one-on-one, -on -one, more of an isolation thing, but then there is a learning curve. You know, you end up making so many fabrics which you yourself look at it and say, hey, it's not gonna make it. With these kind of open discussions, you exactly know where to land. So that's the best part about the collaboration in this project. So going forward also, I would strongly uh, recommend having open discussions. And we missed out our Genealogia partners because this collection was all waterless or very less water used in the whole, uh, and it has got a very uh, a low EIM score as well. So these were the things that were very, very uh, strongly considered while designing the construction. So going forward also, we would definitely continue discussing with manu uh, machine manufacturers. See, the idea comes from Christine, right? What is in her mind? And from there, we start reverse engineering, going all the way to the yarn, the blends, the dyeing processes, you know, how we can reduce our EIM score. So all this was possible because of a good collaboration and open discussion. So we would continue doing this for future. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And now, what about Tom Taylor? Uh, will it continue offering this kind of fabrics, including hemp, or more? What did you learn from this experience? Okay, I mean, we offer these product ranges now in August, in our August collection. But for me, it should be a goal to really integrate these super great, comfy fabrics, for example, into our Never Out of Stock program or to have it like a really basis in our product offering. I mean, this fabric is really nice. It looks nice, it feels nice, it's sustainable. And why shouldn't we continue using it? For me, it shouldn't be just a one-time shot. Can I add something here? Because it's not only about creating fabrics, it's also important the way that we create them. So the way that we collaborated with NDL, it was great because we, I mean, there are also other partners. We saw in, in reality, how is it to create from scratch something when we usually pick up fabrics randomly from different uh, meals. But when you sit down and you, see, you think, what do you need? When you have a standard and then how you bring it a little bit lower more to the normal, like to the reality, and then you can see what you can do. This is amazing, actually, because you learn from it, and we all learn how each what, what each business needs, actually. So this was the greatest part for me in the end, and that's why we will keep on doing such projects. And the sustainability world is moving super fast. We all know it. And maybe, yes, for now, this is the right fabric, but maybe we learn also new things during the next weeks, years, months or whatever. And we should definitely keep on keep on um, improving the fabrics, keep on improving the partnerships and maybe also blend it with other fabrics. I mean, the world is super open and we should definitely um, not stop to improve ourselves okay thank you and what about uh, the flex company uh, what will be the future like after this experience and for the future maybe new uh, hemp varieties different thicknesses or different ways to use the fiber can you tell us more about it 
we we are just at the beginning of the story. Uh, to tell you the truth, when I see the fiber we were producing three years back, you know, it was very coarse. Cool. We already, you know, improved so much the fiber, and we know that the fiber we are producing today is much coarser than the one we'll be producing in the coming years. So we, you know, we worked a lot with our uh, partners from, you know, from the from the farm. Um, we are working on breeding. We are working on, you know, so many aspects on the growing part. Um, so we know. You know that it will be it will be easier and easier for the spinners um, because hemp is a coarse fiber and the magic of spinning, uh, the magic of you know what NDL has been doing and you know that this is part of the collaboration because if you would see the fiber, you know when the spinners see the fibers they say no sorry we can't use this fiber, and that's you know that's the the very interesting part of the blends. I mean you take a super sustainable fiber, you know where no irrigation, no pesticides, no herbicides, you know, it's, there's nothing more sustainable than the hemp which we are producing, but it's, you can't use it like this. So basically you can only have 20 to 30%, but then you blend it to other fibers and you make, fun, you, make you know, you, you just make magic fabric out of a coarse fiber, which is, you know, which is the great thing and which is, you know, which can only be done Thanks to you know the collaboration we have with the spinner. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> and what about Lansing? Um, well, I, if I take a macro view here, I, I mean I do think hemp is going through what I would call a honeymoon period. <laughs> <laughs> and um, if I walk round the shore, every every mill has hemp. If you ask them why, they're not too sure why. Because somebody else has it. Um, and I think just when you're in a position of telling a story about responsible production, um, some NGO or brand will come up with a reason why it's not. So I think there's many challenges on the sustainability front for sure. We're ready. I think. Just really looking forward, I had to write, uh, many years ago there was a BBC website and you could put your date of birth in there and it told you the, what number of human you were on this planet. So I put my birth date in there and it calculated that I was the two billionth, 835 millionth 178,215th person on earth, okay? So about 2.8 billion. Now I find myself, next year, the population of the world will be 8 billion. So since I was born, three times as many people on earth. And those people need feeding, they need food, they're getting richer, they can buy more things. So eventually the dominance of polyester and cotton is not going to fulfill the textile needs. Something has to fill that gap. So there, there was um, a theory put forward in the 1980s called the cellulosic gap. And it came up with reasons why polyester and particularly cotton will, will not expand exponentially and cotton particularly. So something has to fill the gap. And I think the emergence of hemp is exciting. Um, even if it's only that we'll be able to have a crop growing in the northern hemisphere, we won't have to rely on cotton growing countries for a cellulosic fiber. Having said that, I think there's a, there's a long way to go before the, uh, the industry understands hemp. Um, I don't think there's economy of scale. Um, I think there needs to be a lot of work in collaboration with spinners and weavers. And I think there's a lot of probably what I would call hype um, that has to, be, uh, has to be pushed aside. But I think it's positive and um, I look t towards a future where we can collaborate with other fibre suppliers. Thank you. It's a, it's a great Great topic you touched, and it was some, somehow introducing my next question. You stole my idea. <laughs> because I would like to, everybody, to ask everybody one last question. I know that uh, you want to celebrate, but really, I, please, I 
keep your short, uh, short and clear answers so everybody can also um, inter, inter, interact with each other and speak to each other. But I would like to know what's the future of denim? What's the future of jeans? Do you think that hemp could really mark the future of jeans see, significantly? See, as a male, I think um, all natural fibers are important. People are going towards natural fibers. Uh, durable denims is the thing that we are particularly interested in, so a pair of jeans could last longer. So coming back to the question of hemp, it's a natural fiber, it's going to be important, it will continue. And I hope we scale it up to uh, a level where the prices are within the reach. And uh, it's all about natural fibers and regenerative fibers. Okay, thank you. Tom Taylor, what does Tom Taylor think that our two I believe friends? the same. I agree completely with Rashid. I think the future is all the natural fibers and all the alternatives, but also recycled fibers. So it's not only the natural ones, but also the recycled, because we have to recreate from what is already existing. So I think this is definitely the future. And... Uh, what it refers to the sustainable fibers like bust fibers as we have discussed is i think we still have to educate the end consumers if we want to have a future on that it's going to happen only if we explain to the people out there because we the people who are here everybody knows already but the people out there the ones which who will buy they need to know so i think it's it should be a little bit more pushed from all sides so that people will recognize it and go away slowly from all the fibers which are harming and they create higher impact on earth. Juliane? Nothing to add from my side. I mean, she's our denim expert, so definitely mentioning everything. Thank you. What about Dennis? Um, yes, you know, we, we are uh, producing hemp. We're also producing um, uh, flax. So we're also selling cottonized flax, and we also launched, uh, you know, uh, last month the first uh, GRS certified uh, cottonized linen fiber. So we are, you know, I'm proud to announce it here today, and uh, I hope NDL, uh, you know, will uh, will use it in their blend. Um, I I believe that you know hemp or flax are part of the solutions. Of course, you know, the cotton industry has many. The, 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 the denim industry have many solutions with the recycled cotton, you know, recycled fibers. Uh, natural fibers are one of the solutions. Um, probably a little bit more expensive, uh, but we have to make denim more durable so we can afford paying for natural fibers. You know, uh, hemp or flax will never be as cheap as cotton or as the synthetic fibers because um, uh, because we have to pay the farmers also and you know it's, it has a cost uh, sustainability has a cost and uh, the customers have to know it that's it we have to inform them <laughs> michael um looking to the future well if we look into a past i don't know if this is an urban myth but I'm sure I read somewhere that the first denims were based on hemp. I asked the Levi archivists when I was there last year, they can't find evidence of this, but I'm asking Mosin to research this deeply because he, he'll uncover it if anybody will. For the future, you know, it's the 30th year of Tencel this, this year. And finally, Tencel is cheaper than cotton. And so I would say cotton really doesn't compete on a, on a, in a textile sense. Cotton has bigger competition from other arable crops. And I think that in the long term, the point I was making about population, um, about fertile land, cotton competes with arable crops. Hemp and wood and wood pulp do not do that. So I think the future for cellu certain cellulosic fibers is strong. Um, I think cellulose is the most abundant uh, natural polymer on earth. Mankind is gonna have to utilize it in many ways uh, for pharmaceuticals, for fuel and for textiles. So I think it's important that um, we work together on collaborations um, I think it's still a long road for hemp. I think 
the farmers have to work out what to do with it but I think that in the future I think hemp is probably going to be a much larger part of the industry. Thank you. Thank you again for your deep thoughts. Um, I don't know if there is anybody from the audience who wants to ask some something, clarify something or uh, want to know something more? Can I ask a question? Yes, of course. How much Hi guys, uh, Morsin from Endrime here. How much cotton is in cottonized hemp? <laughs> May I answer? Yes, of course. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Morsin. <laughs> That's the best question. So cottonized hemp actually is 100% hemp. Uh, it's just that we bring hemp to the same specs as cotton in terms of length and fineness. So we say cottonized because we bring hemp the same specs as cotton, but it's uh, cottonized hemp is 100% hemp. And how do you obtain cottonized hemp? hemp? Um, so basically we, uh, yeah, so the, the fiber for is grown to hemp, uh, we, it is sown in April, we cut August or September, then we leave the fiber on the field for the rating, so the, the wood which is inside will separate from the fiber which is on the outskirt of the, of the straw, then we do a mechanical uh, mechanical treatment to separate the part of the fiber from the wood. Then we take this fiber, we do blends, you know, we take from different regions so we can we can uh, guarantee the consistency of the, you know, of the of the fiber month after month. And it, this is the cottonizing is purely mechanical, uh, the, the the cottonizing which we do, uh, and this is a kind of carding. So we uh, we shorten the fiber and we uh, we the, the idea is to split the fiber to to get a finer uh, bundle of fiber and then it is spinnable you know for coarse count so basically hemp as we said is coarse but since denim is using very coarse count uh, you know this is a perfect market for this fiber. Thank you, thank you a lot. Do you want like, to add anything? Yeah, I just <laughs> like to um, say one thing to all the guys and girls. Next time you walk into Tom Taylor's store and you have a look at these beautiful pair of jeans, please, please appreciate all the hard work that has gone into this. And uh, that's about it. Thank you so much, Farouk. <laughs> so I would say thanks, everybody. Whoever wants to speak with our uh, speakers, please be free to, to talk to them and enjoy the evening uh, with drinks and talks and chat, whatever. Thanks again for joining us and being part of this talk. Have a good evening. Bye. Thank you. Bye, -bye. Thank you.